Welcome to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV, DJ Rain. And when we come back, we're going to be talking to a regional band out of Mississippi, Chad Wesley Band. So make sure you stay tuned and let's find out what exactly these guys have going on. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV, DJ Rain, and I'm sitting here with two of the members of Chad Wesley Band. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Oh, man, we're great, man. How are now, you? Good. Now, before we get into the interview, um, I want you guys to introduce yourself, kind of let everybody know exactly who you are, um, what you do in the band, um, et cetera. So, you go first. I'm Chad Wesley, the fearless leader, I guess one could say. Mm -hmm. I play guitar and piano and vocals of the band. Okay. My name is Anthony Daniels. I'm the bass player of the band. All right. Now, <coughs> you guys like really seem to be making a lot of noise um, these days. Trying. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. Um, who all makes up Chad Wesley Band? Uh, the core of the band is, is is the three of us. Steve couldn't be with us today. He's he's the drummer, Steve Smith. But uh, we're, we're the core of the band, and we primarily tour with the three of us performing because what we share with just you know raw bass drums and guitars it it tends to change once we start adding all the extra stuff like the horns that you'll hear on our record we just released and with the backup singers and stuff so we kind of play a duality between the two we have the the raw three piece and then we have the big show band but as far as the core of the band it's the three of us Steve Smith, Anthony Daniels and myself okay now give us a little like background on you as far as like you have a strong musical background like growing up in the family personally I do I, re I actually I really know that all three of us do mm -hmm. I, I know it's really strong with me my my dad was a performer my grandfather was a performer my brother was a performer so it just it was natural for me to fall right into it mm -hmm. I definitely am the one that's carried it carried it the furthest mm -hmm. and it, it's 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 been with me since I was a child I actually just uploaded to a uh, our Instagram page mm -hmm. on, and Facebook, a uh, picture of me playing guitar when I was literally six years old, you know, making the statement that I've been on this grind for a minute. I <laughs> have. I'm like, I really have. I've been, on, I've been on this for a long time. And I think I've invested almost 18 years in just playing the instrument mm -hmm. of guitar. You know, I started playing professionally at the age of 16. I would go to school. And, and then after I got out of school, I lived in a town about 45 miles outside of Jackson. So as soon as I get out of school, I'd hightail it to Jackson, play an open mic night, you know, maybe book an acoustic show somewhere at a restaurant. Anybody that would give me a chance, anybody that would just take one chance on me, I would, I would go headstrong into it. And it started making me a little extra money and started kind of getting my name out there. But it was hard. It was hard, you know, going from school all day, right. playing all night, <laughs> driving back home, and then getting up and going to school the next morning, you know, repeat you process. You keep your grades up. I tried. <laughs> so, so, so I imagine, like, I mean, with your with your family having so many performers, they're probably real supportive. Oh uh -huh. yeah, very supportive, man. I, I I couldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for my mother and my father. Nice. So, so how are they taking in like the success that you guys had so far? I think it really hit me when I went to my mom's and my mom and dad, I, but she was just her there. My dad was at work. And I handed her a copy of the album, shrink wrapped, barcoded, just full legitness. And you know, she got a little teary eyed. You know, just she 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 saw a tangible, you know, right, a tangible thing that represents all of the hard work. Because I've I've attempted to to record albums before, but I suffer from a little thing called perfectionism, and mm -hmm. I tend to overthink stuff. And it's been really hard for me just to really get something out there, but. You know, the guns were on us this time, and it had to be done. So finally completed it, and, and now things are going great. We haven't heard one negative comment, which is, it's still, there's a lot of exposure it still, you know, needs to get. But right. so far, from what it's already doing with the single simply being released, it's getting a great positive response. People who've bought the album, they love it, plus the little bonus tracks that we put on there, which was just us being live in the studio. You talk about the core of us. Right. The, the, the main songs of the EP are very highly produced, horns, organs, keyboards, all the extra stuff. But we did put two tracks on there on the, uh, that'll be available on the CD version only, not on iTunes, that is just the three of us after hours, after it was all over with, just 
jamming around, you know, mm. throwing the ball to him, like, hey, man, come up with something. And he oh. threw something, and we just improv. Nice. Where music originated from, right. you know. Nice. Now, let's get a little background on you. Well, uh, my name is Anthony Daniels, and uh, I'm the bass player of the group. Uh, I've, uh, music has been a very big, important part of, you know, my life, my family. I mean, um, I, I like to tell people that we were like, you know, like the Spartans. If you didn't play music or if you weren't music, if, if you didn't have music in you, they would just toss you to the side right. and, and <laughs> say, come on and give me, a, give me another, another child. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, music has been... Uh, has been been a part of me ever since I've I've known you know I before I known about myself, mm -hmm. um, I was raised in church so of course you know being in church all night long playing drums mm -hmm. all night long then trying to get up and go to school in the morning and and get out of school and come back to practice a choir rehearsal or just going to plan for somebody's church and some somebody's group or just it's it just just been a, a a long long uh long journey with me and music and i just uh i'm just thankful that you know through chad you know he actually allowed me to go ahead and um to well, to go ahead and make my dreams a reality for us doing a first live recording and uh you know it's everything has been going you know, wonderful. And it's, I mean, it's it's kind of scary because we w we wasn't really expecting things to jump off as mm -hmm. fast as they were. Mm -hmm. You know, it was as fast as they are. Rather, uh, we have been just meeting. To, you know, running to the right people, uh, meeting uh, very 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 uh, important people, as you would say. Uh, it's always important. Oh yeah, very important people. Very <laughs> important. So right place, right time. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, uh, e even even though I'm I'm older than Chad physically, uh, Chad has uh, taught me a lot as far as the professionalism of the whole music game. Uh, he he's he showed me how to uh, read different people. You know, because a lot of people will tell you something. I got this and I got that, and then you right. be all excited about it. Then you get your feelings hurt. But you know, being being around Chad, you know, Chad has been. And, and the professional era for much longer than I have, and um, he just he he's taught me a lot for as you know trying trying to con conduct the business of music. You know, I've mm -hmm. always been in the fun part of music, but Chad is bringing us into the light of the business part, and so I think that's what actually makes it, um, you know each each member of the band uh, like family because he he treats us like family. There's there's no. I'm Chad, and this is my band. Is right. we're all Chad Wesley band, so, right. and that's that's the thing that I like about Chad. So, um, you know, it, it's 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 been a it's been a fun ride, and I just can't wait to just see what see where the ride is going to take us. Now, how long have you been playing bass? Uh, I've been playing bass for about about 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Wow. For a while. I bet you guys are amazing. Uh, I mean, I've seen you live, but like in that studio, just. Jamming out, I just bet you that's like just an amazing thing to watch. Yeah, that man's on another level, man. man. I mean, cause, it, cause that, cause really that that free time in the studio when you just jam out, like when you can really explore that creative, you know, part of your brain, you know, and, and not actually have to like please that crowd or whatever. You just kind of let loose. And I don't, man, I like to sit in one of those sessions. I love watching people, like especially talented people, just jam out on it's on like fun. their weapons we of choice. We love to write, man. We it's love fun. to write. I mean. I'm the dominant lyricist, of course. I mean, it, it, it's, it's my thoughts. But musically, I, it, it's to a point now where I, I can't make the music without them. Right. Because they have become so welded into what I do mm -hmm. that I, I feel like they are really a part of, of, of the music I create. Like now, I, fe I feed off of them so deeply. And like a lot, a lot of our shows will borderline become spiritual. Like right. people will be so locked into a trance and, you know, Playing the club circuit it is border, it's borderline funny right. for me. <laughs> Let me catch up right there because we're running out of time ahead, in this segment. Ahead. When we come back, we're going we're gonna to finish talking about that and uh, some other stuff you have going on. So make sure that you stay tuned and we'll be right back with Chad Wesley Band. For more inquiries about Chad Wesley Band, visit www.chadwesleyband.com or Facebook and type in Chad Wesley or Twitter, Chad Wesley Band.
Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pad Network. Exposure TV is produced by Peaches, host and producer of On Location TV. Thanks to House of Pain for their assistance. Deftel DJs. Deftel DJs. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV DJ Rain, and we're sitting here with two of the members of Chad Wesley Band. Now, Chad, you were talking about the the club circuit yeah. being funny. So, elaborate on that. I've, I've been doing it for so long, and I, and I love it. I do. I love club circuits. I mean, because you really meet some interesting people, and you work with interesting people. <laughs> I'm sure you can empathize. Yes. But with what we're doing now, and, and I, I come from doing cover music. Mm -hmm. I, I, had, I was in a lot of cover bands. I was in uh, a, lot of, a lot of regional acts like Goldilocks, mm -hmm. Santa Fe, Full Moon Circus, mm -hmm. and those are all extremely successful cover bands. In a cover band, your, your, your expectations is play the songs we love and make them sound like the way that we love them. Right. But when you step out and you start becoming an original artist, as the people that you actually cover were, it becomes a whole new, it becomes a whole new game, mm -hmm. because it's like even now when we do covers, we don't necessarily do them to sound like the original artist. You know, we we play those songs as if we wrote them in right. our own right. fashion to represent the way that we think things should sound. Mm -hmm. And and it's no it's no competition or disrespect to the artist who originally wrote them. If anything, it's paying homage. Like man, let let me show you what we can do with it. You know? Right. But uh. What's funny about the club circuit is, and I was talking about some shows become borderline spiritual, is we will get so intense into performing the song and so intense with the parts that we play and the mood that we set that you can look out and there's almost a, a trans mm -hmm. over people. And you're always going to have that one bar manager or one general manager or, or promoter. They don't see people dancing in a club and they freak out. Right. They wonder, why aren't they dancing? <laughs> Well, there was a time when people just listened to music right. and actually was hearing things that their that their brain wanted to actually take in and, mm -hmm. mem and you know and remember, mm -hmm. like you. So, it our manager says it the best. Our, our manager says it becomes concert mode, right? And you don't really get a lot of concert mode unless the crowd knew ahead of a time ahead of time you're coming to a concert tonight, mm -hmm. you know. Because sometimes as a cover band, for lack of a better term, you will become a meat jukebox. Mm. I, can, I mean, I can't call it anything else other than that. You're a living human meat jukebox. I know how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, feels it, gets, it gets a little frustrating, but uh, I mean, the, the, the money you make can be good right? You know, if, if you're reputable enough. But mm -hmm. uh, that's the funny part about it, because they'll catch you after the show. Hey, man, people aren't dancing, man. I was like, but they're staying. Right. They're staying mm -hmm. and they're purchasing. Yeah. So I think we're good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, going like you know, you're talking about um, you know doing your own sound with the covers. Um, describe like your guys' sound now. It's evolved so mm -hmm. much. It was it was good from day one mm -hmm. because of our level of musicianship, but it was unorganized. Right. Because I have a background in so many different styles of music. I grew up in country, in bluegrass, in gospel, and I grew up in a dominantly black community. So I was always exposed to blues, mm -hmm. and blues is where I always just leaned more towards. I loved the soulfulness of it, and I found blues through Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan, which is I don't really like to typecast Jimi Hendrix as a blues artist. He was a psychedelic rock artist, right? but he, like myself, had a lot of blues influence. Stevie Ray Vaughan was a blues artist. That's my dude right there. I have him on my necklace. <laughs> this was actually given to me by a fan, and I wear it every day. There's a great story behind this, but uh, listening to them, I come to realize that my heroes had heroes, mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it, becomes, it becomes a situation where you start researching, well, okay, who did they listen to to get to where they were? And then I started finding B.B. King mm -hmm. and Muddy Waters mm -hmm. and Howlin' Wolf and you know, Albert King, mm -hmm. and then when that opened the doors for real blues for me, I. I started really understanding that you can get so involved in the technical end of music when it's charted out 
and you, and you can just lose touch with the spiritual end of it. Mm -hmm. And I think the best decision I ever made was finding two guys that grew up playing music purely for spirituality. Right. Because it opened up an avenue for me because I was always different in that sense. Like, I never played the same thing twice. And that was always frustrating for a lot of bands I was in because they wanted to do it the same every time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, today I don't feel like that part. Today right. I feel like more of an angrier guitar solo. Today I feel more like a loving solo or, you know, the way mm -hmm. I would play. Then I found guys that just said, man, play how you feel today. Play right. how you feel. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what they did. Yeah. And when we started really playing a lot, because we, we play a lot. Like, our, our, our manager said there's no reason a band like you guys should not be playing at least two nights a week. Mm -hmm. So since February of, of 2011, you know, we've, we've covered well over 100 professional shows. Really? We stay on the grind. Because if you're not playing, you know, if you're, if you're not using it, you're losing it. Right. And, you know, we have to play tonight, and I'm looking forward to it. Like, I, I just get so excited. I don't care if it's like this, if we're playing in the corner of somewhere, if we're playing on some big massive stage. The fact that I get to go have spiritual music making moments with these guys, that does it for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, can you tell us, like, exactly how you guys came together? Like, the, like the story, like... No, 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 that's a, no, that's a funny story. Oh, that's uh, too funny, man. <laughs> now, occasionally I go into Guitar Center and just, just mess around like all the other musicians. And uh, I, I had, a, had a bass guitar down playing it. And it was just... It was just uh, Hippie guy, coming. Hey man, uh, I just got my bass restrung and recrowned. And uh, can you try it out for me? See how you like it? Uh, sure, yeah. I so didn't I, want him I, talk about the bass. <laughs> I just wanted an excuse to talk to him and hear him play. Yeah, so I, I got it. I I was playing on it, and he was looking like you know, you know. I I can tell that he wasn't there just to see how his bass sounded. Right. He was there for something just to see what just to see what I had. So I was playing around, and I said, Yeah, man, it sounds good. He said. Uh, who do you play for around here? I said, uh, I don't play for anybody. I just moved, just moved in, into the area, so I don't really know a lot of people. <laughs> I said, well, I'm your guy. It's like, like he already <laughs> had his number wrote, wrote down on the card. So I said, okay, cool, cool. Can't that, turn that, down that, opportunity. You know, mm -hmm. That'll work. So, you know, I was like, you know, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, I get numbers from guys all the time. So, I saw something just said, call him. You know, he's like, hey, man, this, this is Chad. Uh, man, I would love to have you down at this open mic jam that I'm having. So I said, okay, you know, I come out, and whenever, whenever I got there, I didn't know that he. I, I knew he played, you know, he played the played the guitar. But then after I walked in and heard him playing, I'm like, wow, he's he's awesome. So mm -hmm. he called me up and said, let's go ahead and play play a song, play a blues song in the key of F or E or what, what whatever. So we got up and we was jamming, and it's just like it's just like chemistry. So. It, it it's like we <laughs> it's like we fell in, in in musical love. So right. So ever since that day, we've been been together for as you know. It's like once we get on stage, is I don't have to look at him. He don't have to look at me. I already know what he's gonna do. He know mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do. And I think that that's that's what uh, impacts our music. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, because that cohesiveness, I know, like it just pours out into right. into the crowd. You know, they can really see it. But we're running out of time on this segment. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the album, uh, shows, what you guys have going on. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned, and we'll be right back with Chad Wesley Band. For more inquiries about Chad Wesley Band, visit www.chadwesleyband.com or Facebook and type in Chad Wesley or Twitter, Chad Wesley Band. Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pad Network. Violator All-Star DJs. Exposure TV is produced by Peaches, host and producer of On Location TV. Thanks to House of Pain for their assistance.
of week. Prayer reads about Chad Wesley Band, visit www.chadwesleyband.com or Facebook and type in Chad Wesley or Twitter, Chad Wesley Band. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DB, DJ Rain. We're sitting here with Anthony and Chad from Chad Wesley Band. Um, you know, we were talking about the group um, and the music and how you guys came together. Now, has it been like any type of struggle, like, you know, working together at any point? Because I know, I know long hours and, and things like that, you know, people can have their differences or, you know, is it just, I mean, are y'all meshing together so well that you know, things are just flowing like they should. It's funny you bring that up. <laughs> this, this is probably the most productive band mm -hmm. in the sense that no one wears an ego. Mm -hmm. No one brings a bad attitude. If, if, if it's something going on in your personal life, it gets left back at home. Right. When we come together, it's fun, it's jokes, but it's also pure professionality. Mm -hmm. And that is such a productive atmosphere, well, Espe I, especially. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I think a lot, a lot of it has to do with all of our, all of our wives. Uh, they keep you on check. Oh yeah, they, <laughs> they, they keep us in check. And uh, another, another great thing is, I can call Chad's wife, mm. and we'll talk just like we're brothers and sisters. I mean, I go yep. to her job. She shows me what's what's the hottest skincare out. And Chad can go to my wife, and I can go to Steve's wife, and, and you know it's just like a big, it's a big family. Yeah, right. family. And you know, y once we go on on the road, our wives know that we're we're on the road, and they they actually support us. Mm -hmm. Now, when it started off, it was it was rough. I mean, I actually worked uh, long hours, you know, at you know at in, at, at a job. Uh, you know, Chad had a, he he had a lot of time, but. It was rough on him trying to trying trying to go ahead and, and see about me mine's and Steve's schedule, and I know that put a lot of stress on him. And now you know, uh, me, and, me and my wife talked about it, and we were like, well, uh, well, well, what do you think about you know just doing this music thing full full time? And, and you know, at at first we was like, nah, we're, we're not gonna do it. But then after you know after talking to her and checking out you know check checking out things in the future and she knew that music was my passion she was like well maybe it is time for you to go ahead and you know and pursue your dream mm -hmm. so now that i'm doing the music thing full full time and now me and check and talk every day about what's going on and what 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 we got you know to do and what we need to handle everything has really become more of of a more of more of a fun fun time instead of all just stressed out and right. you know how, how are we going to get here are you going to be off of this I'm not going to be off of that now it's more of a well let's just go and do it mm -hmm. so you know it's, it's 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 it was it was rough at, in the beginning but now uh, everything is a whole lot smoother than what it was and I think I really think that like that spousal support is that a, mm -hmm. is that a word spousal right. We'll make up. Yeah, we'll it's, make a, it up. It's, a, it's a DJ. It's a, word to, it's a word today. Um, but that support, like, from your snippet, is very important. It is. Um, because it just, it makes, to me, it just makes things, things just a, flow a lot easier. You know, my wife, she's real supportive of my job. Of course, I know it's not, a, I know it's not hard to deal with, like, people in entertainment. You know, your schedules are completely different than hers. And, mm -hmm. you know, just, so having that support at home, like, you know, I commend anybody's wife that or husband that's supportive of their significant other, especially when you're pursuing your dream. Mm -hmm. um, now, let's talk about the album. Oh yes, the album. Um, how long? How long were you guys working on this project? I want to say, technically, it started uh, summer of last year. Mm -hmm. We started at one one. Not, I don't want to call it a home studio. But it was borderline a home studio, oh, and we uh, we released uh, we released pretty much a, a demo mm -hmm. of of, a, of our first single, and it did well, sold well on iTunes enough that when we play now, people know the lyrics to it. It, it spread like wildfire. 
but I knew the song was capable of so much more. I knew we were capable of sounding like so much more. So we took a major hiatus from recording. I said, okay, I knew, I know that we're start that we were gonna start on a record, but let's go play live some more. Let's go stretch these songs out. Let's go see where they can go. Let's go find out how they really want to breathe. Right. And we got about another six months under our belt mm -hmm. after releasing that demo version of of the single. And then once we got about another six, seven months under our belt, I said, okay, it's time to go back in the studio. I've scouted out some places to record. And uh, I said, I think I found the right place and I think I found the right team because, you know, reiterating on what he said earlier, you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with in this business. Right. And we are so fortunate to have great people around us. So we assembled a team of, of guys to work with us at a studio in Jackson called the Recording Studio. There's TRS East, which is here, which is because Jackson is a hub city to all the major recording cities. Mm -hmm. And there's TRS West, which does stuff for like American Idol and, and, and other major industry things. But uh, assembled a team of, of sound engineer Buck Allman, who's mm -hmm. went out with Steve Vai, Rob Zombie, the Williams Brothers, I mean, everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, a local engineer, Paul Babineau, and engineer and producer Kent Bruce, who's won four Grammys. You know, mm -hmm. he works with uh, works with Malico Records, and he's worked with uh, Cassandra Wilson, uh, Johnny Taylor. He's done stuff with REM, Cass uh, Cassandra Wilson. I may have mentioned her. I don't know yeah. Not. I did, okay, my bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's worked with uh, Melissa Etheridge. I mean, just tons, right. tons of people, uh, and just a lot of guidance. On it. But I, I kept running into the problem recording my whole life where people kept telling me how I should sound, and I finally decided, all right, you know what? I'm going to produce this record. I'm going to be sole producer on it. But I'm going to surround myself with great engineers. So Paul Babineau and Buck Allman were the, were the engineers for this record. I was the producer. And it was mixed and mastered by Kent Bruce. We started working on it in May of uh, this year. And we just went, we went at it full steam. And trying to balance recording the record and playing live as much as we do, it's been a headache. It's been a major headache, but we just knew it had to happen. It had to be done. And I already had the songs written. Mm -hmm. Because these songs I've had for actually quite a while. I'm actually in the process of writing a new album. So mm -hmm. when I record this next album, it'll be fresh. But these songs are, are an testament to things I've wrote, you know, really grown up within the last five years. You know, growing with these guys, the way they've helped me shape my own craft and my own music. And we just went in and dug right at it, and I brought in uh, a lot of help, you know, Mike Laskin on organ, Jim Pierce on sax, Mark Hatch on trumpet, uh, Nikki Reed on backing vocals, and it was just a great, great ensemble of people, and I think we laid down some really nice music. Now, where can people um, pick up the album? Right now, in, in the immediate Jackson, Mississippi area, mm -hmm. it's available, the hard copy is, with the two bonus tracks of us playing live in the studio. It's available at Morning Bell Records, mm -hmm. located in Dueling Hall in, in Fondren. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working on getting the actual CD in some more record stores throughout the state and through other states. As far as a digital release, it is set to be released in, in iTunes very, very soon. So just keep checking iTunes. You know, it's kind of slow to pop up with them guys, but uh, it has been submitted. Well, they're telling me we're running out of time. So real quick, um, the the shows that you have coming up on the, on this new tour that you have going on. We kick off our third southeastern tour October 25th at Zeppelin's in Biloxi. Zeppelin. Great, great venue. They treat us well. Great live crowd. Great food. Mm -hmm. Great drink prices. And you said in Biloxi? Yeah. I know that venue. Yeah. Um, well, give everybody your contact information if they need to get contact with for booking or um, just to like your fan page or whatever. You can find anything and everything about us at www.chadwesleyband.com. It has links to all of our social networking sites, including uh, Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. It has link to our, our our management and our agencies to book us, everything you need. Nice. Videos, songs, all the great stuff. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on. And that's all we have for today on Exposure TV. Make sure you check out chadwesleyband.com and check out some of the great new music these artists have. And tune in for another episode next week of Exposure TV.